We're here in Finland today, which is home to warm weather, sandy beaches and flip-flops. And of course, that's complete crap. But we are here for a very specific purpose, and that is this, the brand new Ford Cougar as part of Ford's Cougar adventure. Ford has done everything it can to make this thing better off-road, more comfortable, more practical, more livable, basically all the mores. So I guess we should go and find out whether that's the case. So Ford has done its best to make the new Cougar look a lot nicer. And you've got the front end from the Ford Edge, so it's meaty and it's got a big grill. Very American, but not too over the top. Interior, looks good. A lot nicer, a little bit cleaner, fewer buttons. It's just a lot nicer. Obviously you've got your Focus S column, lots of headroom. As for the rear seats, it's all very nice and spacious. Oh, just leaving myself in. It's very comfortable. Although to be fair, my six foot frame is brushing the top, but it's not too bad. I'd be happy in here for a couple of hours anyway. Because it's a Ford, I feel like we should start with practicality. And one of the new features is this. There we go. Don't even need to use your hands anymore. Just press the button. I think it's time we hit the road. Yes, this is the ST line variant of the new Ford Cougar, which means it gets a sporty body kit, sporty seats and sporty suspension for a less pothole friendly, but more involving ride. We're driving a new Cougar, obviously, and it's undergone a fair few design tweaks to make it a little bit nicer, a little bit softer around the edges, but still practical and still good at the whole off-road thing. But we'll get to those details in a minute. I thought we'd talk about how the car drives first because first and foremost, that's kind of important. To be fair, it feels a lot like the Ford Edge actually. It's not gonna set your world on fire. It's not massively exciting, but it's not boring either. It's quite engaging. The steering has very light feel, but you still kind of know what's going on. It's compliant enough that you can go over lumps and bumps and you don't really feel them too much, but at the same time, it's not wallowy and it doesn't constantly do this while it's trying to settle. There's enough firmness to kind of inspire a bit of confidence and if you do want to drive faster, you actually can and you won't tip over. Intelligent all-wheel drive makes sense if where you live is as snowy, but front-wheel drive will do for the rest of us. As for the engines, the petrols are less polluting but take more effort to get going so we'll be thirstier. You are better off in the more torquey diesels such as the 120 PS 1.5 TDCI which replaces the 2 litre version. So I drove the manual earlier and that's actually quite nice. It feels a bit like the Focus RS, it's not too chunky, it's fairly long throw but it's light. You can change it fast which is basically what you want and less so in this car. We're in the automatic now which is okay, I mean you don't drive this fast. It's changing without me really feeling it. That's all I want really. And it's long enough obviously for motorway cruising that you don't have a constant grumble of the engine. The Ford Cougar has quite a nice ride position. You're kind of fairly high up, makes you feel a bit like the king in a road, which is partly why a lot of people buy SUVs. Nice visibility, no weird blind spots. It just, it feels nice, it feels safe, it feels comfortable. The seats are firm and supportive, which is good. And also the dials are just nicely clear and clean and the Sync 3 display is just much, much nicer now. And it's touch screen so you can pinch to zoom and do all the stuff you do on a smartphone. Everything's just a bit more ergonomic, a little bit simpler, a little bit easier, which in turn makes it a hell of a lot easier to live with. In terms of interior space, there's plenty, as you would expect from a box on wheels. And there are also some nice little extras if you're willing to spend a bit more to brighten up the place, literally in the case of the rather nice roof we have there, which is interrupted by a bar, but that's okay. We'll let that slide. Admittedly, that extra brightness does cost a lot of money, but you do get a fair few standard extras on the base C-Tech. That includes 17 inch alloys, keyless start, DAB digital radio, cruise control, and hill start assist. Not too shabby. So do I like the new Ford Cougar? Well, I actually really, really do. It's quite pleasant to drive, it's spacious, the cabin's nicer. 
it just feels good. It feels like it can do the job it's intended to do. And that's especially impressive when here is not a very forgiving place to drive. Now I've not delved into the spec sheet too heavily, that will be for the full Recombi Cars review. But starting from 20 grand is a good place to be considering how much it can do. I'll be honest, the old Ford Cougar was a little bit dull, no offense Ford. But this is a definite improvement. And although you probably won't be driving through snow a lot of the time, you will look pretty damn good as you pull up to the school gates. Okay, so a more fun drive can be had elsewhere in the form of the Seat Ateca, while the Peugeot 3008 has a genuinely pleasing cabin. But there are enough positives to make the Cougar worthy of your consideration. Just in case you don't believe how cold it is here, look at this, icicles. <laughs>